This is part 33 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss attribute routing in ASP.NET Core MVC. This is the same application that we've been working with so far in this video series. Notice at the moment we have used this use MVC method and then specified our default conventional route template. Now what I'm going to do is comment this line of code and then use the use MVC method without specifying any route template. This means at the moment our application does not have any routes configured. So if we try to navigate to any of the routes within our application, that is to the root of the application or slash home or slash home slash index, we get 404. Notice when I reload this web page, we get 404 error. Now, what we want to do is use attribute routing instead of conventional routing. So when we navigate to the root application URL, we want the index action of our home controller to be executed. So within Visual Studio, let's open home controller. With attribute routing, we use the route attribute to define our application routes. We could place the route attribute directly on the controller class itself or on the individual action methods. For now, let's just place it on this individual action method. Remember, when we navigate to our application root URL, we want this index action method to be executed. So I am going to apply the route attribute. Notice the first parameter to this method is the route template. Since we want this index action method to be executed, when we navigate to the root URL, I'm going to specify the route template as an empty string. Similarly, we also want this index action method to be executed if the path is slash home. Along the same lines, we also want this index action method to be executed if the path is slash home slash index. So with these three route attribute instances placed on this index action method, if we navigate to any of the following three URLs, that is to the root application URL or slash home or slash home slash index, this index action method of our home controller will be executed. Let's prove this. At the moment, within the address bar, we have our root application URL. When I reload, the index action is executed. Similarly, when we navigate to slash home or slash home slash index, index action of our home controller is executed. Now, if we take a look at the conventional route template that we worked with in our previous video, notice as part of the route template, we specified we want this ID route parameter. We could do the same with attribute routing. Let's understand this with an example. I'm going to place an instance of route attribute on this details action method. We want to be able to get to this details action method within our home controller if the URL is slash home slash details. We also want the ID of the employee to be passed to this details action method and we want a route parameter for that and we're going to specify that as part of this attribute route template. To specify a route parameter, we include a pair of curly braces and then within the curly braces, we specify the name of the parameter. In this case, the name is ID. At the moment, this ID route parameter is mandatory, meaning this details action method of our home controller is executed only if there is a value for this ID route parameter in the URL path. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice when we navigate to slash home slash details slash one, we see the details of the employee whose ID is one. Now, if we change the ID value to two, we still see employee details whose ID is one. That's because Within our application, we have hard-coded the employee ID to one. Let's change this to use this incoming ID parameter. Notice now when we reload the page, we see employee details whose ID is two. Similarly, when we change the ID to three, we see that specific employee details. But the important thing to note here is if we do not specify a value for the ID route parameter, we get 404 error. This is because at the moment, this ID route parameter is mandatory. To make it optional, just like conventional routing, use a question mark at the end of the parameter. With this change, this ID method parameter may or may not receive a value from the URL. So let's make this integer a nullable integer and then use C sharp null coalescing operator here. So basically with this expression, we are telling if this incoming ID method parameter 
is not null then use that value if it is null then use this default value of 1 so let's save our changes and take a look at the browser at the moment within the URL we don't have a value for the ID route parameter so when I reload this page we see the details of the employee whose ID is 1 but then if we specify a value for the ID route parameter we see that specific employee details with attribute routing the name of the controller class or the name of the action methods play no role in which action is selected for a given incoming URL path. Let me explain what I mean with an example. Let's change the name of this controller class to welcome controller and we also have to change the constructor name here to the same and let's also change the name of this action method to list. With this change we are basically saying if the incoming URL path is any of these three then execute this action method within this controller class. It doesn't really matter what is the name of this action method or this controller class. Let's actually prove this. Let's change the URL to slash home slash index. Notice we have an error. This is because it's looking for a view file with the name list.cshtml and that's because the action method name is list so by default it looks for a view file with name list.cshtml but we know with this list action method we actually want to use this index.cshtml file which is present in the home folder and that home folder is in the views folder so let's specify the full absolute path to this index.cshtml view file we do that within the view method so within the root project directory look for views folder in that we have home and in that we have index.cshtml file notice now when we reload the page we see the index view as expected so the point that I'm trying to make is the action method names and the controller name doesn't really matter if we have routes specified this way let's change the names back now we already discussed we can apply this route attribute on the controller class as well as on these individual action methods at the moment we have it only applied on the individual action methods and as a result we have a lot of repetition notice this route home it is repeated twice on the index action and once on the details action we can make these routes less repetitive by applying the route attribute on the controller class as well so what I'm going to do is apply the route attribute on the controller class and then I'm going to set the route path to home this means we can remove this route attribute from the index action altogether and we can also remove home and from our details action method we can remove home so with this change in place the route attribute at the controller is combined with the route attribute on these individual actions so for example to get to this index action method we could use just slash home or slash home slash index let's prove this notice when we navigate to slash home slash index we see the list of employees similarly when we navigate to just slash home we still see the list of employees but when we navigate to the root application URL we see 404 to fix this all we have to do is on our index action let's include another route attribute and then set the path to just for slash or tilde for slash notice now when we reload this root application URL we see the list of employees so the important point to keep in mind is when a route begins with for slash or tilde for slash the controller route template is not combined with the individual action method route template these attribute routes also support token replacement to include a token we use a pair of square brackets and then specify the token in this case controller on the individual action methods we can use the action token let's also do the same with the details action method with these changes in place this token action is replaced with the action method name in this case details and this token controller is replaced with the controller name in this case home this is a powerful technique because later if we change the name of the controller or the names of these action methods we don't have to change our routing configuration the application works with these new names now let's quickly test these tokens 
Notice when we navigate to the root URL, the index action is executed and that's because of this route. And when we navigate to slash home, again, the index action is executed. That's because of this route working in combination with this controller token. Notice in the URL, we have this path home. So the controller token is replaced with home. And then we made the index action within this home controller, the default action by including an empty route template. Now, if we navigate to slash home slash index, notice again, the index action is executed slash home slash index is working because of this route attribute working in combination with this route attribute. So the token controller is replaced with home and the token action is replaced with index. So the index action within our home controller is executed and we see the list of employees. Now, instead of including this action token on every individual action method, we can include it just once on the controller. To include it on the controller, we include a forward slash and then a pair of square brackets and then the token action. Since we have the action token at the controller, we don't need it on the individual action method anymore. Notice now when we navigate to slash home slash index, the index action is executed. Similarly, when we navigate to the root application URL, again, the index action is executed. But when we navigate to slash home, we see 404. This is because it expects both the controller name and action name in the URL. But at the moment, we only have the controller name. So what we want to do is make this index action method the default action for home controller. In previous versions of MVC, we could easily do this by specifying action equals index. But in ASP.NET Core MVC, we cannot do this anymore. One hacky way of doing this is by including tilde forward slash home. Notice now when we navigate to slash home, the index action is executed. For our application, conventional routing works just fine. So I'm going to delete all these route attributes. And in startup.cs file, uncomment this use MVC method that has the default route template and then delete this use MVC method. With attribute routing, we use route attribute to define our routes. Route attribute can be applied on the controller itself or the controller action methods. With attribute routing, routes are placed next to the action methods that will actually use them. Attribute routes offer a bit more flexibility than conventional routes. In general, conventional routes are used for controllers that serve HTML pages and attribute routes for controllers that serve REST APIs. However, there's nothing stopping us from mixing conventional routing with attribute routing in a single application to get a bit more flexibility with routes. Attribute routes are hierarchical. This means the route attributes on the controller are combined with the route attributes on the individual action methods. However, one very important point to keep in mind is the controller route template is not combined with the action method route template if the route template on the action method begins with a forward slash or tilde forward slash. We can also use tokens like controller and action with attribute routing. This is a very powerful technique because if we change the name of the controller or an action method, we don't have to change the route template. The application just works. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.